Well, it seems as though vaccine passports have finally arrived on American shores. This is something that I've been worried about um, since uh, last year, I believe I did a video, uh, when Dominic Rapp, the first person in the English-speaking world, uh, brought this up. I believe he was, the, at least at the time, the health secretary of the United Kingdom. Um, he was uh, one of, uh, you know, the chief lieutenants of uh, Boris Johnson in uh, developing and ruling out and enforcing his his very draconian lockdown regime, uh, which uh, has done a lot of damage, I'm sure, uh, to the United Kingdom and to Britain. And Dominic Rabb, you know, in a moment of, uh, of uh, magnanimity, said, you know what, some of you guys are concerned, hey, I have no freedom, I'm like a prisoner, um, when will this end? And his idea was, you know what, maybe someday we'll have a vaccine. And after a while, a lot of people, you know, might start getting vaccinated. And when that, when that time comes, you know, hey, we could create this system where you get a passport uh, that certifies, I've been vaccinated. I'm not going to get people sick. I'm a good, responsible British subject, uh, doing as the crown tells me and getting my, my jab. And if you do all that, maybe you'll get some of your freedom back. That was kind of the idea. Um, but now uh, we're hearing that the Biden administration intends to bring this a, a, a similar, although less scary sounding regime uh, to the United States. The Biden administration assures us that uh, these vaccine passports, uh, as they're being colloquially you know, called, I don't know if that's the official term that the Biden administration would want to use. They'd probably use something a bit more Orwellian, although vaccine passports are, you know, every, every um, sort of new speak term eventually takes on its real meaning. And so they have to create another new speak term, um, another euphemism to, to distract from the true meaning of whatever it is they're trying to talk about. Kind of like when they change the name of a war to an overseas contingency operation. So don't worry, Biden says. Uh, the federal government is not going to be instituting this vaccine passport system. We're working with corporate America to institute it on you. Um, and if anything, that should make you uh, more afraid. Now, I guess it's supposed to make people less afraid because they say, hey, this is the private sector. And, you know, we Democrats, we're all about the government. But, you know, maybe if we if we catch this in terms of the private sector, um, Republicans will be all for it since, you know, they love big business. If Biden tells you, hey, you have to get a vaccine uh, to go to Walmart, uh, you know, that'll make people angry and they'll say, you know, screw you, Biden, I'm not getting a vaccine. But if Biden tells Walmart to tell you <laughs> that you have to get a vaccine to go to Walmart, then everything's supposed to be okay. In effect, uh, the corporate nature of um, America's budding vaccine passport system is a distinction without a difference. Uh, if you have the federal government leading the charge on this and working with all of their corporate allies, and of course the biggest corporations in America are, you know, tied at the hip with government. This has been true going back to the 1870s in the United States. Um, if you want to understand that and, the, and sort of the origins of the current American economic system, um, there's uh, two good sources on that, uh, either uh, historian Gabriel Kolko or Murray Rothbard. They both wrote very good books on this um, period, and if you look into them, you should be able to find them. Rothbard has a lot of books. His is called The Progressive Era, but if you read really any of Kolko's work, um, on a myriad of different companies and different time periods, uh, you'll understand the way uh, that corporate America uh, is tied uh, to uh, the government, but the federal government in particular. And so when Walmart or Ticketmaster or American Airlines or Delta or whoever um, decides to come out with this, uh, with their unified vaccine passport system that all these corporations are going to use to try and restrict unvaccinated Americans uh, from uh, engaging in commerce, uh, <laughs> Um, they will be doing so essentially as uh, agents of the state. And, you know, these distinctions, because we live in a de facto corporatist system rather than a de jure uh, corporatist system, where, you know, it's not clear which corporations are necessarily a part of the regime, <laughs> because not all companies, not all business owners, this is a, something that's it's hard for a lot of, you have to do a lot of research and really understand um, economics and history in the United States to understand that there are um, fundamentally two kinds of businesses in America. Um, you have uh, actual um, private enterprise, uh, which has uh, no uh, sway 
over the regime, has no power, and is really at the mercy of the regime, and is trying to, uh, desperately to uh, evade uh, the, uh, the regime and not be uh, driven into bankruptcy. And then you have the second kind of business that controls the regime and is trying to drive other businesses into bankruptcy. There is a symbiotic relationship uh, between uh, government, politicians, bureaucrats, and uh, generally corporate America. Now, not all, co not all corporations uh, necessarily fall into this category, but generally speaking, the largest corporations get to be that size um, by corrupting the government and by um, uh, taking over uh, the uh, regulatory regime of their industry and suppressing their competition while elevating themselves. And so any so-called, uh, you know, private sector vaccine passport um, must be looked at in this context, in this light, um, through this lens uh, of history. That's why I'm very glad to see people like uh, Tho Bishop and Dave Smith um, pushing, uh, you know, the uh, their libertarian followers and making it clear that, you know, if this is something, you know, don't let the, uh, the regime trick you into thinking that this is some kind of private venture. This is not, um, you know, Danny who runs the hardware store down the block saying, you know what, will you please just please, you know, wear a mask if when you're in my store, I'm a little nervous or hey, you know, can you not come into my store unless you're vaccinated? Just it would make me feel better. This isn't that. Uh, this is uh, um, government uh, bureaucrats and corporate America wanting to get a peek into your medical records and to restrict um, your, you know, your rights uh, as a consumer. Whatever this uh, passport system turns into, it will not end here. They will find uh, new and new ways to utilize this in the future and to restrict people further. For example, and imagine that come next year, uh, the, this passport system will be used to enforce uh, the seasonal flu vaccine. Oh, if, unless you have your flu vaccine, you can't go to Walmart. You can't go to um, uh, a concert to see Cardi B. No, everyone knows that if you want to go watch Cardi B uh, twerk live in person, you got to have your flu shot. Uh, and then, you know, they might use this to, to do, you know, to you know, do things further, like, hey, uh, your BMI is too high. You got to get your BMI down. Or um, uh, there's, there's a whole myriad of ways that they could start using this to control people um, by having access uh, to their medical history. And who says this starts, at, this stops at medical stuff? Um, perhaps, you know, this is, uh, and it probably would be, um, sort of the foot in the door that they need to get a, a social credit score, uh, you know, down the pipeline. Not anytime soon, but, you know, further on down the road. It's, it's taken us not too long to progress from the point to where a vaccine passport would be insanity to you're insane if you oppose a vaccine passport. This is, you know, in the course of, uh, you know, just over a year. January of 2020, what we're talking about right now would have been uh, beyond Alex Jones' insanity. And the fact that this is a so-called, you know, public-private partnership uh, changes none of that. It's no different than if the federal government came out and, uh, you know, made this edict itself. And in fact, it, you know, uh, that's essentially what they're doing because these corporations do not um, uh, are not in uh, opposition to the federal government. They do; they're not antagonists. They they have a symbiotic relationship, and so they will work together on these sorts of issues. Uh, corporate America um, and the federal government both have an interest in oppressing ordinary people. And once corporate America adopts this kind of system, uh, they will uh, quickly, I'm sure, find ways to impose this on small businesses as well. So, you know, whatever hope, maybe you say, hey, I'm not going to shop at Walmart anymore. I'm going to shop at my local corner store and get all my groceries and whatnot, uh, you know, because I'm not going to uh, support their vaccine passport system. Well, you know, maybe the city council uh, will decide to force, uh, you know, local businesses to start, uh, you know, using the vaccine passport system. Or maybe the Chamber of Commerce will come in and impose it um, some way. And so that's why I'm glad to see that uh, my governor, Ron DeSantis, who was talking about this a couple weeks ago um, at his panel with a bunch of doctors, including uh, Scott Atlas, 
Um, he was talking about on the pa the prospect of a vaccine passport. If that comes in any kind of way, uh, it's not going to be implemented in Florida. And if uh, comp you know corporate America wants to do it on their own, uh, he said you know the state might have something to say about that. Um, which is smart because I think that DeSantis understands that there is very little difference between whether the White House um, or Walmart uh, or uh, you know uh, JetBlue uh, or any of these other companies uh, that we you know that lo a lot of us have to deal with 7-Eleven. Um, it doesn't matter if it's coming from them or the White House, and it's kind of the same thing, and it will lead uh, to far more egregious. Uh, violations of right to privacy uh, and of just, you know, uh, basic, uh, uh, what's the term they use? Public accommodation, uh, I believe, is the language they use in the Civil Rights Act, which is, you know, of course, an unconstitutional act, but that's a discussion for another day. And so luckily, I think we here in Florida will not be uh, stricken with this whole vaccine passport nonsense. Our governor seems to have been ahead of the curve on this um, and has stayed uh, strong as far as that's concerned. It'll be interesting to see if uh, old Christy Nome up in South Dakota uh, does the same uh, since uh, she apparently, uh, there's, I, I haven't been following the story too closely, but you know there's accusations that she's pr fairly uh, beholden uh, to uh, corporate America. And I do not at all think that it would be uh, illiberal or you know anti-libertarian in any sense or anti-market uh, uh, you know, anti-capitalist uh, to uh, pass some kind of a law saying that companies can't do this because in this case, you know, you have to, you can't look at things in terms of just, oh, companies, they're just like, you know, they're the private sector, you know, and that's, and whatever they do is capitalism and whatever the government does, you know, that's socialism or whatever you want to call it or statism. Um, no, there is no, there is no bold line. Uh, well, I mean, there is, but I mean, in terms of just when you're looking at companies versus the government, uh, there's not a bold line between them. Just because a Walmart uh, is a corporation does not mean uh, that it is not a part of the government. You know, these are clearly not, you know, free market forces that are going to impose a vaccine passport system uh, on the American people when the White House is making it clear that they are leading the charge in cooperation with, uh, you know, their corporate partners. And so essentially by banning vaccine passports, far from restricting the rights of entrepreneurs, uh, the state of Florida would be nullifying, uh, you know, federal edicts, uh, you know, which are about as legitimate as, you know, executive orders. I mean, it's not an act of Congress yet, um, but, you know, the level of coordination uh, between the White House and the corporations, um, I, I think, is... Um, plenty of justification to consider this to be a government action. And I, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to support uh, a governor nullifying federal law. So that's my take on the vaccine passport situation. I'm sure that there will be more to talk about in the future, uh, but that is the baseline. That's where we stand as of right now.